amazing week. I mean, you know, you go out and win another EIWA title. Um, but this team sending seven guys to the tournament, uh, very special. Um, just tell me about this week right now and where the guys are at going into this, this big tournament. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had a, obviously we had a great EIWA championships and coming off that you can kind of, you know, maybe be, maybe you can maybe put the cart before the horse, get really excited, or you can kind of ride that momentum and be like, we're, we're coming this weekend. Mm -hmm. And our, our guys really adopted that second approach, right? Everyone's very excited and very motivated. I feel like this time last year, especially some of the younger guys, you know, season's long, maybe a little bit beat up or whatever. And this year it's like, everybody wants it bad. Yeah. And when you got seven guys for us, right, who are really, really focused, it's gonna, you're gonna have a good weekend as a team. For you in particular, uh, you know, obviously, you know, most, most folks are talking about Spencer Lee and you and, and the four time. It's probably not something you, you think of every second, you know, because it's, you gotta do your job. Um, but obviously the task at hand for you in particular, uh, number one seed we got in your bracket. Uh, just tell us about the, the bracket and how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of quality guys. It's a it's a deep weight class, you know. Um, at the end of the day, I've wrestled most, if not all, of the, you know, that kind of higher level guys that I'm going to have to beat to win. So really, you know, because of the parity in my weight class, there can be a lot of different guys that I might find myself competing against as the tournament goes. So we've talked about what I got to do for certain guys, but at the end of the day, at the level that I'm at, if I wrestle hard and I'm attacking on the guy, giving them no air the entire match, it's it's going to really increase my odds of playing out the way I want it to. So as much as the draw, you know, people, who I'm going to wrestle, those things play a factor. At the end of the day, I just need to make sure I'm, 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 I'm that killer that I need to be. Mm -hmm. And if I have that mindset where I'm, I'm on the guy, giving them no room, it's going to play out well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, uh, I know that, um, you know, looking up some of these things and, you know, I covered, you know, Kyle pretty closely in those years, you know, when he won the four and obviously it was, it was awesome uh, back in 2013. Um, I know you and Kyle are buds and friends and has he reached out and gave you any advice about this week? He's, uh, you know, he's been a, definitely a mentor to me, kind of my whole college career. Obviously he's not in Ithaca right now, but we're still in touch and, you know, he's, he's helped me a lot throughout my career. Even, you know, not even if you take out the wrestling out of it, just kind of pointing me in the right direction, showing me the kind of things that, you know, if I want to be one of the best guys in the world, what that entails, what kind of, what kind of life commitment that takes. So, you know, obviously he's helped me with my wrestling and as a training partner, but more than anything, I think he's kind of exposed me to the level of commitment that I needed to operate at, right? Mm -hmm. Because you look at, you know, a guy who's succeeding in college and they make a jump to the senior level, but you don't see what, what gets them there, right? Mm -hmm. And you know him exposing me to that, I think, was really valuable. Yeah, and and certainly no better mentor out there, you know, than a Kyle Dake. And um, this week, you know, uh, no telling what this team can do. But uh, uh, I think um, you know Chris and those guys and Vince were, were touching on it, uh, and Jake as well, that everybody's dialed in, and that's a rare thing, especially uh, in this sport sometimes, where you know it can be highly individualized. But for you. Um, what do you see things happening for this team uh, this week? You know, seeds, draws, all those things. Maybe not everyone's projected to do what we know they can do, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm extremely confident in our guys. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you told me tomorrow, someone pulled out a crystal ball and said we were going to have seven All-Americans, I would say, yeah. You know what I mean? So I really believe in that. And I think we can have, you know, multiple guys winning. I, I and obviously we got to do it. It's on us, right? But we can do it. You know, we have the guys, our guys have the tools for it. And the way that everyone's wrestling, the way that everybody is training, the way they're, they're where their mind's at, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but I, I'm confident that whatever happens this weekend, we're going to be able to look back and be proud of what we did. Yeah, we're excited, man. Best best week of the year. My DBR is full of all the rounds, you know. My <laughs> wife's like, get that off of there. I was like, no, it stays. You know, so it's just, it's one of those cool weeks. But, uh, dude, any final thoughts? I, I know that, um, you know, one of the things I want to share with you, uh, going back to, you know, November, you know, the, the Gomez match. And, um, you know, I've never been in a situation calling a match where the whole building was, was sort of shocked and stunned, you know. And because we've never seen that before, you know, of uh, a setback, you know, but 
obviously you look at November, first match of the year, a lot of elements in play there, freestyle and the, and the folk style making those changes. Uh, Austin is uh, certainly in a rougher spot now. Uh, got a low, low seed in that bracket. Um, but, you know, you may not end up facing at all, you know, in this tournament. So um, what did that teach you um, from November to now? Uh, you obviously want to peak at the right time uh, when that takes you off. Yeah, you know, I think I was coming off a really good performance at the World Championships, and I had kind of had this bitter taste in my mouth from that match with the Iranian guy, mm -hmm. and it was like everything was about redeeming that. And it was this huge monkey on my back, and I feel like I just wasn't in the right spot. You know what I mean? I, I was so worried about that and getting ready for these, you know, guys at the World Championships, and then it was like, well, who cares about the Wisconsin duel? Keep focusing on these guys, mm -hmm. and that'll take care of the rest. But you know, it's just, you can't, you can't take things for granted. And, you know, and not just in wrestling, in general, life hits you when you're not ready for it. So, like a good story, my dad keeps this uh, ticket in his office. Um, a friend of ours was like in a really big wrestling match, winning and got scored on literally at the buzzer to lose. Wow. And my dad like keeps the ticket and it was like heart so upsetting it was like one of the first kids my dad really coached other than me and my brothers mm. so upsetting and um he keeps it and i'm like well, why do you get the ticket and he's like when when things are going wrong you're ready for them to go wrong when things are going good is when you're not ready for it so you gotta always be ready for it mm. and i uh just learned sometimes you need those kicks in the head to remember but you gotta always be ready for it yeah. even when things are going great yeah, dude, 100%. And, uh, you know, I, I wrestled for a lot of years. And one thing that always stuck with me is, like, the will to win makes nothing without the will to prepare. You know, and I always, that always stuck with me. And um, obviously not on, you know, this stage, but, um, you know, you apply that to life, you know, where, you know, you're not going to have a great day all the time at work or school. and um, But the champion always rises. And uh, I think you've done that and been a really great example. And the one thing that I remember and I don't think, you know, many people know this story, but I'm sitting over there with the headset on and, you know, the loss happened and you come over, you're helping your guys, you're helping the team and everybody loved that. And that's, that's a true man, you know, and I, I give you major, major props and kudos for always you know, doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank so, you. And, uh, but dude, we won't end on that note. Let's end on that, you know, um, this team, exciting. Uh, what's this final few weeks been like for you uh in terms of you know just soaking it all in you know with, as a Cornell student yeah I mean it hasn't even really set in that this is it for me I, I and I don't think it really will for a while you know because the way the way our guys are it's like we're all a team we don't have that well you know you're not you're not a senior so you don't you know whatever um and because of that I feel like it doesn't even feel like I'm going anywhere you know what I mean and I, realistically it's probably not going to hit me until you know the season's going to start next year and I'm not going to be doing it, <laughs> you know, but for now I'm just enjoying it as much as I can. Um, if I, if I win this weekend or go 0-2, I'm going to wake up on Monday, take a week off, start training again. And, you know, all that might change by this time next year is my title from athlete to whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously it's, it's, uh, You'd love to just do this forever and represent Cornell and be on this team with these guys forever. But, you know, even even when I'm gone, I'll still be here with them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously that's that's uh, some of the, the questions that folks had. And, you know, what's next for Brianni after school and, and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, getting ready for the world championships and then the Olympic Games are coming after. Okay. Um, I plan on staying here to train and compete. And... You know, coaching, not coaching, th th those things all will come when the time is right. Um, for now, I just really want to focus on competing. If, you know, Mike and I talk and he's like, hey, we really, you know, something happens, we want to put you on staff, that's great. But right now we got four coaches and they're awesome. They're doing exactly what we need. So, you know, when it's my time to coach, that time will come. But for now, just keep focusing on competing and helping these guys as much as I can from maybe what Kyle did for me for these guys. That's awesome. Yanni, thank you so much for talking with us and uh, best of luck this week. Thank you.